Greetings, Crocodile Army, and happy 2014 to you! The lovely and talented Jacqueline Glenn recently did a Q&A video in which she mentioned chiropractic, and she said that a chiropractor had done great things for her when she was having some back pain. There were some comments criticizing her endorsement of chiropractic, saying that it was quackery, and others saying that it was perfectly legitimate. Most people reading those comments would probably have been puzzled by the vast differences in views in a population made up primarily of skeptics, but I actually wasn't surprised. You see, I've been considering doing a video on the topic for a while now, and I did some research over a year ago about it, including asking a chiropractor friend of mine about it. The reasons for the difference in views on the subject is that there are two very different schools of thought in the profession. If you ever consider going to a chiropractor, you need to learn their views on it first. When I asked my friend about his profession, this is what he told me about the two schools of thought within chiropractic. The main divisions are that of being a vitalist or being a mechanist. A mechanist believes that life is the product of physical, chemical, and electrical forces alone. A vitalist sees those in existence as well as an elon vital or vital life force. Basically, intelligence organizes matter, and without intelligence, there could be no organization of matter, and without matter, no expression of intelligence. Chiropractic unites the man, the physical, to man, the spiritual. And by removing nerve interference or dysfunction, the body is able to express innate intelligence optimally, which is the aspect of universal intelligence operating in a living being, kind of like the Holy Spirit in Christianity. My school in philosophy is definitely on subluxations and innate intelligence, although the scientific understanding is continually evolving. Yeah, I'll bet it is. So, does it sound sufficiently like New Age nonsense yet? I would suggest that if any medical professional ever starts talking to you like this, slowly back away and then run like you're being chased by a rabid skunk. The whole idea of subluxations themselves is completely unsubstantiated. When I asked for a definition or some evidence to show what a subluxation was, he pointed me to some chiropractic trade journals which contained tons of testimonials, including a chiropractic adjustment done on a newborn baby that supposedly saved that baby's life, but not a shred of peer-reviewed research. I think of a subluxation as no more reliable an indication of what's wrong with you than being told by a Scientologist that you have thetans inside you that can be measured by an e-meter. In fact, there's something called a subluxation station, which for an exorbitant sum can supposedly tell a chiropractor with some degree of certainty whether you have a subluxation or not. Interestingly, you may assume that he must never have taken a biology class in his life after the sixth grade, or at least that he was a poor student, but you'd actually be wrong about that. He took regularly high school biology and then AP biology as a high school senior for college credit. So how would I know that kind of level of detail? His AP biology teacher was my dad. Yes, despite my dad being his teacher, a very well-informed skeptic and aware of how chiropractic works with its long, rich history of placebo effect and mysticism disguised as science, he still ended up becoming a chiropractor in the vitalist school of chiropractic. While I would love to see some more directly channeled skepticism into science class, it just isn't in the curriculum in most places. As an extra test for any potential chiropractor, you could ask them if they support the use of vaccines. Many of them do not. When I challenge my chiropractor friend on his anti-vax views, he claims that he's just making sure people have all the information, though of course in this case it's misinformation. The basis for this lies in the rejection of the modern concept of germ theory. You did hear that right. While they accept the existence of microorganisms that cause disease, they say that the modern scientific principle is wrongly focused, mostly because not every person exposed to an illness will get it, though this is hardly some medical revelation. It's all fun and games until you lose herd immunity, anti-vaxxers. So I can't speak specifically to any given chiropractor, certainly not Jacqueline's, and maybe some chiropractors could be effective. Personally, though, if I had issues that people sometimes see chiropractors for, I would see a physical therapist or a pain management specialist before I would ever consider a chiropractor. I hear enough stories about how debilitating back or neck pain can be to entrust that to a chiropractor, and I'm not going to entrust it to someone who believes subluxations exist. They might as well be telling me they can cure me of invisible flibberty gibbets, and being taught about pseudoscience has helped me see through it. I am fully vaccinated both literally and figuratively. Thanks, Mom and Dad.